Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and I don't know if any of you have ever felt envy, you know, when you look up to somebody, but at the same time you kind of despise them, you know. I think a lot of us have felt this emotion where you kind of idealize or look up to someone and go, wow, their life is so good, they have so many things, I wish I could have those things as well. But at the same time you feel envious, like, why do they have it, not me, what are they doing that is so great that I can't do, you know. Envy is a de negative and dangerous emotion, you know. I believe if it's manageable, it can build character, but if it's unmanageable, it can completely destroy character. What I see is in a lot of fiction and in uh, a lot of movies and books out there, envy is painted as something that will literally turn your face green, you know. Turn green envy, there's an expression that goes... Grön of avund, or green of envy. And you have the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, the person there in uh, uh, that movie. What was its name again? Oh my god, YouTube is gonna kill me for this. Uh, you have also, in another example, Gollum in Lord of the Rings. So I believe these are perfect examples of what envy can do to a person. And I want to say. Idealization can be something positive, you know, it's nothing wrong with looking up to another person or having role models in your life or having people you like think, wow, they're so cool. There's nothing wrong with looking up to Iron Man or Elon Musk or to other people in society, you know, but the issue is when this turns ugly. I believe idealization can easily turn ugly. A lot of people who have worked in a mentor-mentee relationship can have noticed this. You can at one hand look up to and want guidance from another person but at the same time you can be upset and angry with their flaws and what their issues are. You can feel they do not deserve what they have or that they are faking it or you can feel start to feel upset with this whole dynamic so that's why it's such a dangerous dynamic and one that you have to be very aware of. So what I said was envy is okay while it's manageable. It's okay while it's manageable because it is something we can overcome. You can always overcome it. You can always deal with it. You can always manage it if you take care of it in time, if you notice it, if you pay attention to it, and if you respond to it. So envy can remind you about your feelings about yourself and about other people. And it can also remind you of how you're feeling about your situation and what you have and what other people have. There can be a desire to think that the grass is greener somewhere else and there can be a desire to think that things are better at other places. But what does this have to do with racism and sexism? One of my favorite thinkers, Olof Palme, in Sweden, he always said, uh, he said in one famous speech in the radio that the Swedish people are not very racist. They have very little experience of immigration or of people from other cultures. But they can be racist in the competition of work and in the competition of love. That's where racism can blossom, you know, when you're, you really want a job or you're unemployed or you're in behind or you want a promotion. And suddenly a woman shows up and she wants the job as well. And why does she deserve it? She's just a woman, you know. That's when it becomes a card. That's when sexism becomes an actual card that you actually use. Then you find things and you use discriminatory systems to outmaneuver them, to uh, beat them down. And it becomes a method to get ahead, a way to motivate your own greatness at the expense of others and a way to reinforce and rationalize for yourself why you're a good person and why you are more deserving than others. So there's an idea in society that, uh, there's a tempting idea in society that we are more deserving than other people. We are better than other people. And I said envy has a lot with this, a lot to do with this. Envy is looking up to what somebody else has while looking down at them for what they are. So it is contempt towards somebody or a group of people, while at the same time an idealization of what they have that you do not have or that you feel that they have or that you feel that they will take from you, that you want. So envy is a dangerous emotion because it fuels, it's, uh, you know, with all negative emotions, all negative emotions tend to be self-reinforcing. I'm envious because I'm envious because I'm envious. I feel bad about myself and my own situation and what I have, and I feel and I feel contemptful towards other people for who have it, who have what I want. And I feel upset that they have it. 
and then I feel more upset, and then I feel more upset, and then I feel more upset, and that's, you know, that's the transformation from, you know, a normal human person with some basic insecurities and some basic anxieties about maybe uh, real concerns like income and uh, jobs and promotions and success and all those things we can all worry about. And a person that is literally a troll, literally a uh, unhealthy, toxic version of themselves. Somebody who will act out of spite, who will do anything to sabotage other people, who looks down on themselves but also on other people. And that's um, why I want to talk about the Enneagram 4 archetype in the middle of this. The Enneagram 4 type is said to have a special relationship to the emotion of envy. And the uh, Enneagram 4 archetype is uh, associated with the individualist. And I want to say this is the best, you know, at the best, envy can drive the strengthening and the building of character and individuality. It can help you become a person of your own and it can help you recognize your own unique abilities, your own unique traits. It can be a reminder that I'm special. I have something nobody else has. I can offer something nobody else can. And it can also be a reminder that I have been able to, because I am special, do something that nobody else can, have been able to get something nobody else can, have been able to accomplish something nobody else will. So when we are able to deal with and respond to envy, we can also overcome this uh, golem complex, this wicked witch, this greenness complex, this green of envy complex. And instead we can become radiant people, you know, radiant individuals, you know, people that people will look up to and idealize in turn. You go from basically being anxious that nobody, that you are too different to succeed or too strange to be paid attention to or that you won't be heard. And you will start feeling that you are something, you have something to offer that is special, that nobody else can offer. And that builds character, and that builds strength, and that builds power. There is a great power in this archetype, so it's a good one, it's a positive one when you're able to deal with it, and when you're able to grow out of envy and out of the more negative tendencies. You can literally disintegrate, becoming increasingly spiteful, increasingly sure of your own specialness while at the same time feeling increasingly upset about the unfair society that won't recognize you and your abilities or you can become increasingly confident in self and your own abilities and your own unique identity without necessarily having to beat down on other people for where they are from or for what they are or for what group they come from from what subculture they're a part of how they dress how they look how much they weigh how much they earn all those things all those matters all those things we learn do not matter as much as we thought they did. So I wanted to make this video about envy because I believe it has a special role in driving a lot of the sexist tendencies and racist tendencies and jealous tendencies that we see in today's society. I'm not saying it's part of all the racism in the world or all the sexism in the world. I believe that it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. But I believe that it plays a very strong role in it and a very important role in it. And if we can help people build healthy individuality and healthy sense of self, they, we can also make sure people do not spiral into uh, becoming jealous of other people for their individuality or for their self-expression or for their group or for where they come from or for what they look like. I believe individuals that have strong individuality and strong sense of self and a confidence and self-esteem will stand above envy and will be able to deal with envy when it comes up. That doesn't mean, of course, you will still feel jealous at times. You will still feel, wow, they got that and I want that too. And wow, I wish I was as popular as he was. Or wow, I wish I was as good as she was. But at least it will be manageable. and You will be able to recognize that, yeah, they're good at that, but I'm good at this. Yeah, they have that, but I have this. You'll be able to recognize that, yeah, they have a green grass, but I have a very, very blue sky. Yeah, sure, they have a very, very nice house, but I have a very, very flashy car. Yeah, sure, they have a lot of money, but I have a lot of love and family and support from my friends. So that's what we're looking to also, just... Uh, acceptance of who we are and what we have 
and the ability to, in a healthy way, admire and look up to other people for what they are and for what they can do, while at the same time being reminded of how good we are, how great we are, as we are, just the way we are. So thanks for watching this video and if you have any thoughts on this subject feel free to leave them in a comment down below. Thanks for watching and leave a like and share it with other people you might think this is interesting. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video.